we've been making a lot of investments in inclusiveness and in diversity as an organization, and we have for years. And as part of the investment, most recently, we have been investing in extensive training on inclusive leadership. So let me tell you what that means. This is taking our partners and saying, and telling our partners, if you're gonna be successful in the organization, you have to be particularly effective at leading, developing, motivating diverse teams. And, to, and until today, we've been marginally effective at that, okay? You have to be able to lead, you know, motivate, uh, coach diverse teams. And so we've put some training around that. And what we've done is we've made people start to appreciate what their biases are. We all have them, okay? Some of them are conscious, some of them are not. And we make every individual understand what theirs happens to be. And Harvard's done a lot of work on this and they've got some really good things to help identify those for an individual. And I remember watching some of the partners, they, they sit there and they look at the wall and say, I can't believe this. And partners coming to me saying, I have, they've had a, a rude awakening. And what we try to get at in this training is, the fact that you have the biases, everybody has them, so don't be afraid of them. One, recognize what they are. And then, do you really understand, if you have a bias, what that does to the team dynamics. If you have 20 people working with you, what does that do to the team? So if you have somebody on that team that's different than you, what's it gonna take to lead them, motivate them, trade them, um, and the like? Having an appreciation for that so that a person is able to, once you understand it, you can flex your style you can flex your leadership style so that you can be effective at working with someone. Um, this is a big issue, and it's one that's sensitive. I mean, you know, you can't talk about biases and not be on, you know, in a territory that's kind of, kind of touchy, you know, and people take exception to that. I mean, some people, when they did their, when they did their thing to figure out what their biases are, I could see them kind of want anybody looking at mine. Um, and so you see a little bit of that, but we've opened a dialogue on something that people are really starting to embrace. And let me tell you a, a quick story. I, I, and, and this one was literally in the last month. And, and it's, this shows you what this does. Um, last month was Black History Month, and we had Black History Month celebration in our Chicago office. And we had Cheryl Jackson come in. She was, she was awesome. Um, we had a really nice program. Everybody loved it. And afterwards, we had a reception. So we go over, and we're having cocktails. And I'm kind of walking around the room, you know, saying hi to everybody. And I, I bump into this lady who I didn't know before. I met her there. She's a senior manager in the office. She's a black female. And um, so we're talking, talking about the program and how much she liked it and everything. And she said to me, she says, you know, things are different here. She says, things are changing. And so I said, well, what do you mean? She says, it's different. I mean, my experience at the firm is so different today. Said, well, you gotta explain that to me, I don't understand it. She says, well, within the last month, I had my mid-year review. We have mid-year reviews for all of our people. And she said, I was talking to my counselor and my counselor, who's been my counselor for years, she says, I have a great relationship with her. And she said, uh, in our performance review, we got into a discussion that really took me by surprise. She started asking me things like, what's it like being a black female in our firm? What did you go through when you grew up? What was your family like? Um, she started asking her questions, really probing and drilling into who she, uh, what she was. And she says, initially I was taken aback, but she said, we wound up talking for two hours. And she said, it was the best conversation I've ever had in the firm. 
And she said, and, and, and I'll never forget this phrase. She says, you know, she says, I felt like, you know, the elephant that's always in the room? That elephant got pushed to the door. She says, it's not out the door, but it's been pushed to the door. And the impact of that discussion on that one individual, I think is transformational. Now, I had to ask her who her counselor was, because I wanted, I wanted to know, because I knew we were doing these, this training. I said, so I wanted to know if it was a partner that had gone through it or not. And so she told me who it was. And I said, huh, that's a partner that went through this training. And this partner is trying to, trying to embed it in her activities. And so the impact on that individual, to me, now you're talking about transformational change. And so I share it with you, not because we have the answers, because we're on this journey, but I think it's important today that we really stop thinking about so much about diversity. And you know, I think about, I think about the, some of the things that we do. You know, I think everybody probably has affinity groups and all sorts of meetings and everything. I, I, uh, and those are important and the like. But we have, I talk about it in the firm, I'll say this, I see Warren looking at me, but one of the things I say to my leaders a lot is, you know, let's not confuse activity with results. And so we can have all the activities in the world, but we gotta have results. And so when it comes to diversity and inclusiveness, this thing about making a transformational change and getting to a point where it's making a difference in the way we run our business, the way we serve our clients and the like, that's what we gotta to get to.